Hey guys, Quantum here, and in this video I wanted to go ahead and take a look at an updated version of Sapphire Ruby. This is a deck that I think is one of the best at the start of this format right now because it's really, really strong at just controlling the board and then just popping off for game right at the end, and it can deal with more or less everything in the format in my opinion. There are some decks that can give it a little bit of trouble, like some Clarabelle focused decks to match your draw off of the Maurice's Workshop. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Ruby Sapphire going up against Amber Ruby Mufasa, a deck that traditionally has had a decent showing against Sapphire decks. And I do think Amber Ruby Mufasa does get better. As you can see here, my opponent is on the Daisy Ducks. We start off very, very slow, despite being on the on the play, sorry, which is very good for us. But the opponent is going to be able to get a Daisy Duck quest in for two. We reveal the Donald Duck, which goes to our hand, which is nice. And then for two, they're going to drop a Lantern. So it's good to see that they're not developing more aggro threats here. We draw a Lucky Dime, which is okay here because technically we can ramp pretty heavily to play it out quite early. But you can argue if I make a misplay or not in, in inking this later on because you'll, you'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, just focusing on the ramp aspect, turn three, I think, yeah, we're definitely... We ink, okay, we ink a Queen Diviner, which I would say is, again, a misplay. We probably want to ink the Donald because... We have to, we're like on turn five or you know on turn four, which we'll have five ink on. We're definitely going to play the Maui out, not the Donald Duck, because we definitely want to check this this Daisy, right? And so Daisy only getting two quests in uh, before getting Maui is really good. Speaking of which, we reveal yet another character off of it. They have no turn four play, which you know that just basically wins me the game at this point. I would think, uh, like, yeah, them not being able to put the consistent pressure on us just is too detrimental to them i think at this point so yeah we drop the maui take out the daisy duck and pass turn getting one point of damage on the maui not using my fishbone again yeah you know not sure if i wanted to ink with the fishbone and ink for turn so i just revealed that i inked the maui it's not 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 a big deal they do eventually drop a mufasa um and pass turn so my guess is they have like Rapunzel's and stuff in hand and they don't want to just raw play them out. That's why they skipped playing cards on uh, like the last turn, for example. Uh, we do eventually use Fishbone to ink one of the two Donald Ducks there. And at this point, I can probably opt to develop both the Workshop and the Queen. Um, but instead, I'm going to go for a Hiram, which is questionable. Um, I mean, it ends up... Oh, oh, I didn't ink for turn yet. Okay, ink the... Ink the Donald there. Sorry, I thought I inked Donald for turn and play out a Queen Diviner. Okay, that's fine, I guess. We're on seven ink. So, you know, developing a bit of a wider board, knowing that the opponent is likely not on be prepared, which I will say, I think any Ruby deck that can play be prepared, even Mufasa, should probably consider playing it. The opponent here drops a card Soldiers, which is an interesting addition to Mufasa. This is also a card that was played in like the Ruby Amber Locations deck that Talman Purple popularized. Um, it's a decent statted card for its cost, and it does quest for two, so it's not necessarily bad. Here off the Queen Diviner, we do reveal the Fishbone Quill, and we're going to put the rest on the bottom. It does hurt to put all those good cards to the bottom of the deck, but that's fine. So I make a misplay, right, not playing out the Workshop first, because I could have paid one to draw off of that fishbone coming into play off the queen but it's fine we're going to play a popsicle pay one for the workshop as well to draw two then quest with here and banish the popsicle draw another two and just like that you know we drew four cards and we could have drawn five uh so we're going to go ahead and ink for turn the donald duck there and then exert three to probably play out another queen here yep we got fish hook and we've got another fishbone quill in hand so that we can continue to draw cards off of workshop if we need to yes they're a little bit more of the expensive items but it's totally fine we're totally anticipating that the opponent will take out both our hiram and our queen diviner here they're going to go ahead and ink goofy pay two to hard cast a teeth put two damage on hiram two damage on the card soldiers and then run card soldiers into hiram for a total of seven damage into the hiram three damage on the card soldiers which then gets healed up by the rapunzel to net my opponent a plus three then the mufasa will crash into the queen diviner that is exerted and get banished to reveal a mother gothel coming into play exerted with three points of damage so the opponent you know again playing a tempo oriented strategy looks like they're in an okay spot here um but drawing the Shield of Virtue here is actually pretty important. You would think that, yeah, that's double hit off the Queen, but it actually allows our Maui to clean up the board quite comfortably because we also have this Brawl as follow-up. So we're going to pay one to play Shield, pay one to draw off of that as well off the Workshop, and then we're going to probably exert Queen to see what we can hit off of this item, uh, or off of the, sorry, hit an item off of our draws here. 
and we miss and we lose some pretty good cards once again but again right you, you, no matter what you reveal you're going to be losing good cards either way to the bottom of your deck like hopefully you'll just have more good cards to draw um anyways after missing off that queen a little unfortunate we're going to end up using maui to crash into the mother gothel for a total of four damage on the maui pay three to ready up the maui and then take out the card soldiers along with it now we have three ink left over so we're going to go ahead and use the brawl to take out the rapunzel and just like that we clear up the opponent's board um fishbone ink another fishbone and pass turn so we saw the maui's fish hook that we could play if we need to for again item draw off of the uh, Maurice's workshop yeah man workshop guys I remember I picked up my fourth foil one at like three bucks because I'm like yeah this card is actually crazy in this deck um, they're gonna go ahead and Maui drop and challenge the queen which is unfortunate because I thought the queen should hopefully survive another turn to exert and get more items um, but yeah that's not the case they also follow with the daisy duck my opponent is obviously very much aware that a be prepared is is in my hand most likely given how much how much uh, I've drawn and I haven't played a be prepared yet uh, I don't believe I did at least uh, so yeah, they're keeping their board state relatively manageable here, but off the pop school we draw two, off of here and we draw two, and just like that, we get another draw four sequence. Like, this deck is insanely stupid. Um, like, it's so powerful. Okay, so we pay one for Shield of Virtue, and then pay one again off of Workshop to draw, and this is just one Workshop. Like, I don't even need two Workshops. This is probably a misplay. I, I Since I only play one fish hook, I probably shouldn't ink it, but... I don't think it really matters. We end up inking a workshop off of the Tipo coming down. So we're just continuing to ramp as much as possible here. We've got double Tamatoa and double Be Prepared. We just need to find our other lucky dime because remember we inked one in the beginning of the game. But like I said, at this point, the opponent's only on four lore. Like I don't think there's really much they can do to like edge out a win given that we have so much removal in our deck. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even really say so much because this deck doesn't play like Medusa's or... Um, Maleficent Dragons really it does play Be Prepared and it does play Sisu's and obviously Sisu into a Mufasa deck that has very high strength characters isn't going to do much in this particular instance though um, a Sisu would wipe out the two smaller Amber characters and not the Maui of course but that's fine here so the Daisy Duck quest and we get get yet another character to hand so again for only playing like 30 or 30 like between 30 and 35 characters um, hitting like three times off Daisy Duck is absolutely crazy Kiram is going to quest for one and banish a shield to draw two. Uh, so we draw into a Vitalis Sphere. And we have a Tipo and a Cusco in hand. So triple Tamatoa now, which is absolutely crazy. Um, we're going to quest with the Tipo and count up our ink. I don't think we want to be prepared here. Because again, the opponent is only threatening three lore gain, which would put him to nine. So we're not really too worried. Um, we're going to pay one for Vitalis Sphere, pay one for the Workshop to draw. We draw into an Ice Block. So, yeah, pay one, pay one, and then draw one again for the ice block. And we draw into a brawl here, which is actually pretty nice. We're going to end up inking that Tipo now and then fish boning the Cusco, which, you know, you could argue I could just play out the Cusco just to put pressure on board and make my opponent extend further into the be prepared. Because, again, we know our win condition is going to be these Tamatoas. We're going to brawl away the two questing Daisy. So the opponent only will now quest for one, going to seven, and this Maui... Um, can't quest right do make a huge misplay here and not using the shield of virtue because it's buried down there in the items i just don't see it in order to pay some you know because i have four ink available here when i pass turn i could have paid three ink and readied up the hero um and just you know drew, drew more cards so huge misplay there by uh, by me in real life very unlikely if you're keeping your stuff organized just you know with these kind of decks just shows you how important it is to keep your board state organized and clean in order to make sure that you don't miss yeah see i point out to my opponent i'm like oh i forgot to ready my here i'm there because now it's just free you know a free takeout for the maui um the opponent is on four cards though uh they've got two lanterns up so they're on technically eight ink for their characters uh they're going to think about some decisions here i think what they end up doing is paying two to play the, uh, another lantern or something um and then yeah, they're like really thinking about their options here. So they're like, okay, yeah, yeah. pay two for a lantern. Now they have seven available. Because again, they're trying not to extend their board state too much because they know what Be Prepared is coming. They play Maximus, which will give them an extra two lore there. The Maui takes out the Hiram as expected. And they, uh, the Juliet will quest for one going to seven. Tell my opponent, yeah, get your Maximus uh, trigger there. Go to nine. And then I draw Queen Diviner for turn. Uh, quest with Tipo. And now that the opponent's on, what, three cards or two cards? Um, I feel comfortable in be preparing here, given that I have another be prepared. Uh, and what's crazy is I still have six ink left over, so I can definitely uh, drop a queen here. And 
yeah, just pass turn off of queen and just hope they don't have like a Medusa or something for it. Because they do have uh, six, nine ink, right, with those fish, with those uh, lanterns, sorry. So they have a lot of potential threats, including Maleficent Dragon. Um, but yeah, with only three cards in hand now, drawing, you know, the third one for, for turn there, we're feeling pretty good given that we have, you know, the gas in our hands with the Tamatoas. They do have the Mulan into the Rapunzel, though, which is pretty strong for them and netting them another draw, too. So they basically just, yeah, get free card advantage back still with three cards in hand, and they have a bit of a board state now. We draw Popsicle for turn here. Um, I opt to use Queen Effect first instead of dropping Popsicle and drawing first. We finally hit the Lucky Dime. We get that to hand since Queen can only play out items that are three cost or less. Um, but getting the Lucky Dime there is huge. We're going to pay one, drop the Popsicle, and then pay one to draw a card off of the Workshop. So that means draw two. Um, we're going to ink a Fishbone Quill. Uh, and we have, I don't even know how much ink available, like 10, 12 ink. We're going to, what, pay seven for the dime to drop the dime yep and then probably pay another one in order to draw off workshop from dime yep uh drawn to a big sisu which is really nice then we have four ink left over what are we doing here three for shield to ready up queen okay exert queen again reveal hit a workshop which comes into play exerted um and then We've got, okay, Ink, a Tamatoa off of Fishbone, pay one for Vitalisphere, and pay one for a Workshop to draw another card. Holy cow. Pass turn. The small Sisu, also really huge, uh, especially if we have Ice Block on field, so we can take out the Mulan or the Rapunzel, but the Mulan isn't really threatening us right now, considering, you know, even if they shifted Mulan, if, if they're even playing that, it's not going to blow up our board since we have nothing except for the Queen. So they are threatening to go to 12, which is fine. Um, if they have a Goofy, they can go to 14. Um, but again, we're not feeling too worried. They should have a lot, like four cards in hand. But they just can't keep up with our engine. Like, look at our ink. And we now have the diamond play. So, and I don't even know how many items. Like, this is absolutely just insane, right? Um, I definitely need to test this deck into, like things that I would think would be bad matchups. So if you made it this far in the video, let me know in the comment section below what decks give the Ruby Sapphire item deck a run for its money. The opponent just ends up dropping a bunch of stuff here in the Gaston and the Mulan, and I'm like, oh no, you should have not overextended there. But I mean, what are they gonna do? They can't just continue to play a passive game. The Gaston though is, is, is very strong. Uh, however, we do have the Be Prepared, um, and I think we have enough ink to drop Be Prepared and then follow up with the Tamatoa which is absolutely insane because I think the opponent is now finally on like one card. And this is, you know, the battle of attrition that this deck can play. I think I'm down to like 20 cards in my deck too. Just the amount of draw off of the workshop is crazy. So seven for be prepared, eight for Tamatoa, get back an item. That's a total of 15 ink. We can still probably ink for turn and ink off Fishbone um, if we did want to play Popsicle and draw another two, uh, which is crazy. So yeah, we don't need a third workshop. So we're going to use Fishbone to ink the workshop, ink the Popsicle even just to dime the... Tamatoa right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten um, off of the Tamatoa itself, giving us the extra lore there. And we have game, right? The opponents, yeah, on three cards, there's nothing they can do because we have, they can't even out the Tamatoa on board, so we would quest, but we have just another Tamatoa to drop in dime for another ten lore next turn, anyways. And just like that, uh, we made this game much longer than it needed to be for the content, though. If you made it this far in the video, thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Quantum is out.